Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. For those of you who are new here, Sat Chat is not a tutorial. It's just uh, catching up after a busy, busy week and uh, chilling out, starting the weekend off right. Uh, I hope you're all having a great weekend. Um, I'm having a wonderful weekend because something I've had in the works for a while is finally out and available, and that would be the sketchbook floozy templates. Actually, I've got <laughs> I've got all of mine sitting here. I had a brilliant idea. Yeah, they all are. I had a brilliant idea, and this brilliant idea was I was going to put a hook on the wall behind me, over by like the heat tool there, and um, and then I was going to hang up my. <laughs> And here's the hook, it's stuck to them. I was gonna hang up my stencils all right there so I can easily grab them, I don't have to go into the packages, and everything will be fantastic. Oh, and I took the insides of the stencils and I put them in these little pouches that I can stick in the back of my sketchbooks if I want to, because with my templates here, I had them leave the inserts. Like I said, don't get rid of the inserts. Like when you cut the stencils, leave them in there because they will be just as valuable as the, the templates because you'll be able to make a greater variety of different uh, a different page layout. So I'm keeping mine all in these little envelopes so that I can grab them very easily. So like I'm gonna have these on the wall. So I took, I, I found a command hook, but I didn't have any more of the, the command hook adhesive. So I took some like score tape and I just like folded it over on itself and I'm like, oh, that's really sticky. That, that'll work just fine. And um, so I was working on something about 10 minutes after I stuck them to the wall, it fell down. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna stick the hook on by itself and then that can um, that can you know set up and then the next day I'll hang the stencils on. So I did that, hung them back up the next day and then a couple hours after I hung them up they fell. So I'm just gonna bring up the big guns. I'm gonna hot glue this hook to the wall because I have hot glued these hooks to the wall and that works great. The, the walls, the wall material is like a wood paneling type. Uh, it's very textured, very kind of like rough. So it needs the hot glue I think to marry into the nooks and crannies. But when you hot glue something, you gotta be committed to it because it is very difficult to remove. I mean, you could heat it up with a heat gun maybe, but it's messy. It's like, you want to be sure that's what you want. But that's what I'm going to do with my stencils. I'm so excited. I did a blog post about them and a video about them yesterday. Um, if you want to see kind of how, how to use them, but I've been using them for a while. Really, I really like them. Actually, what I like to do is I'll go through a sketchbook. Here's just one that I, I used DaVinci gouache. I was just testing stuff out, but I'll go through a sketchbook and I will just make tons of little grids everywhere and I'll fill up a bunch of pages just for the grids and that way when I'm like testing out it I don't know if that will show up on camera because it's just drawn with pencil um, but I'll put up a bunch of different examples just uh, grid them out so that way when I'm like just doodling around painting don't really have an idea of what I want to do I'll open up my sketchbook and one of those small shapes is way less intimidating than a whole layout and I've been doing that. I started this sketchbook um, in July this year for World Watercolor Month, and it's 9 by 12, so it's pretty big. And I started off the year just kind of putting a couple things on a page because I love when I see um, like uh, people that do art journal journals who like do travel journals and stuff, and they'll do a little bit of writing, a little bit of painting. I love the look of that. Um, but mine were just very kind of random, and I really wanted something to be a little bit more defined, so I decided to start gritting them out and then I started playing with the stencils that I made and um, it was working out working out really well. So this was fun. It was fun to develop this with Craft Stash and they're very affordable. I think the largest the large sets are around thirteen dollars and the smaller sets are like um like seven forty eight or somewhere around there. So basically they're you know they're they're pretty reasonable. You get two stencils in each pack plus all the inserts so that you can piece that around too and make different layouts. But one of the things that really was like, yeah, this is what I want to be doing. This is one of my favorite sketchbook layouts of all time. I did this at the Audubon Society and I love this because uh, I was going to a paint out with a friend and I didn't want to like be find a place, like find the perfect place. That's a lot of pressure, like find the perfect place and that's where you're going to paint all day because you're doing a huge layout and it's going to take you a long time. And a lot of people did that. They had like their oil paints oh, and easels and stuff and they're setting up one spot and just working. And so first of all, you're afraid to like start anywhere because you want to make sure you pick the best thing. So you wander around and wander around and then, you know, you have to pick something usually like... Um, kind of in a rush so you have time to paint it and then you know then you're always wondering could I have picked a better thing but when you grid it out like this I could sit over here paint here for a while then move somewhere else and paint another grid for a while and I drew it all out before I even went to the paint out so it was perfect and stuff like that they can help you like 
fill a sketchbook with these little grids and then you can go somewhere and do a whole like say you're going to spend the afternoon at the beach you can do a whole layout and nothing has to be totally awesome like nothing here is perfection but when you put all the little drawings together i think it's i think they're pretty cool it's like the sum is greater than any of the parts added together like the sum of the parts is great what is that saying the sum is greater than the parts the sum is greater than the parts yeah exactly um and so I wanted templates to make that easy to do. They used to make scrapbooking templates that were kind of similar, but nobody makes them anymore. And they were a little oversized for, uh, for what I wanted. So I wanted something that would be a little bit more nimble and versatile. And uh, I think I came up with it. I think it's, uh, I think it's a, good, a good option. Um, my advice would be, I know a lot of people want to just get them all so they have the most versatility, but if you have to like pick and choose, I would say if you're a sketchbook artist, you're um, the eight by eight, and the 12 by 12 are going to be the best because they have the larger cells and it's really easy to take an 8 by 8 and kind of like lay it down and sketch some of the, the, the things and like scooch it over to get the other side to so flip it over and scooch it over to finish up the, uh, the layout if you want to make it fit like an 8 like the really popular size 5 and a half by 8 and a half book or um, you can double it to fill a bigger page and the 9 by the 9 by 12 obviously fits your 9 by 12 sketchbooks but I mean if you're, if you're you figure each layout you've got you've got two stencils per pack and each stencil you can t rotate it so you get four designs flip it over and rotate it so you get four more designs so that's eight designs without doing anything fancy uh, times two so that's 16 designs but then what I like to do when I'm using these stencils is like combine shapes so if I've got this stencil here and I want a bigger shape, I would combine these three shapes, or I would combine um, this, these four, these uh, five shapes, or you, know, you can even combine like that. You can do sorts of a lot of different combinations so you can get exactly the layout you want and they're all gonna look different. And the smaller ones, I thought, these are handy in sketchbooks as well, but these would also be really handy if you like to make cards because then you've got six by six layout already done if you like those quilt style cards or you just want a funky new layout. And again, you'd get 16 different layouts just by using the stencils and nothing else, not the inserts, not anything else. Um, and then these are sets for five by seven, so great for color blocking, great for like you could um, you could do a, a card where you've got a stamped element here, you have some pattern paper, you've got a title uh, or a sentiment rather. It's I just wanted to be versatile. And then um, we have little marks around the oval and the and the circle in case you want to change that to a rectangle. There's a little there's a little registration mark so you can change it to a rectangle if you don't want the ovals. Um, so yeah, I just wanted it to, be, it to be versatile. I wanted it to be useful. I wanted it to make your other supplies in your stash more useful. Because when Craft Stash asked me if I would do some products with them, I said, I don't want to do something that's going to be fast fashion, that's going to be just gone here today, gone tomorrow, that's going to be something you, that's single use, um, and then you forget about it. I want something that when you have it, it makes your other things more useful. And they were very respectful of that because I feel like so much in the crafting world now is just like buy the product that does one thing and then buy another product to do another thing. And I don't think that's sustainable. I think we're getting, I know I'm getting overwhelmed by stuff. And if I'm going to put something new in my studio, if I'm going to bring something new in, I want it to make my other things more useful that I already have. I don't want it to duplicate something I already have. If you if you are fine with rulers, maybe you have some of those old scrapbooking templates from back in the day. Use them. At least try them first, right, before you buy these. Make sure, like, if, if they work great for you, great. Um, and you have them great. You just can't buy them anymore. So uh, I wanted to come up with something that was specific for... Um, sketchbook artists or comic artists even comic artists could use these so um yeah they're there if you want it obviously if you got something that works for you use what you got um but yeah i felt like i felt like there was really a need there and i've really been enjoying them and it's fun it's fun to go and just make out a bunch of different layouts in a sketchbook and then i have the sketchbook ready to go um so that's fun it's fun especially if you like to do plain air or you like to do urban sketching where it can be so overwhelming it's like oh my word what do I pick if you get a, just a tiny little square you're gonna pick something because it's not overwhelming it's like okay I've only got this tiny little square I'm gonna paint that lamppost or I'm gonna paint that sign or I'm gonna paint that potted plant or I'm gonna do that corbel on a building and um you know you don't have to paint the whole entire street scene I did that once um my friend who I my friend Karen who we went to the Audubon to do that paint out we actually went to a pub downtown sat outside and painted the summer and I'm like, I'm doing it all. I did this like double page spread. Well, no, it wasn't a double page spread. What did I do? No, it was a double page spread in my Stillman and Burn book. It wasn't very great. Um, but then when I came back, I worked from a photo and did kind of like a close up of, of uh, something. Oh, I can show you. I did, um, 
I don't have the other sketchbook handy. It's over in my, my finished pile of sketchbooks because I actually finished that one this year. I am working through the sketchbook snowball. If you don't know where sketchbook floozy can, comes from, because you're probably like, I don't know if I want a product. This is floozy in my craft room. Um, the reason sketchbook floozy came around is because I have, I had, I counted up my sketchbooks I had in progress. And it was like, 50. It was bad guys, so many. And so I was like devising a way that I would actually use these sketchbooks up that I've started. I mean, and we're not even talking about the ones that I hadn't started. Or maybe it was 50 in all and I started 30. I don't know. I had a lot in progress. And so I'm like, all right, we're going to start with the ones with the fewest pages first. And we're going to get those done. Like, like Dave Ramsey's debt snowball. Um, for, you know, love him or hate him. I think he, I think Dave Ramsey has some good financial advice, especially back when I read his book, the five, what was it called? The money makeover or something. Um, I, that was also back. What? I don't know, 20 years ago. Um, but anyways, he had this, this theory called the debt snowball. And what you do is if you have a bunch of debts, you tackle the, the smallest ones first so that you get that momentum. And so I'm like, I'm going to take the sketchbooks with just a few pages left and I'm going to finish those up and get that momentum of, you know, adding finished sketchbooks to the pile. And it did work. It was very inspiring to do it that way. So anyway, um, the, the Stillman and Bergman I talked about is in this, is in the finished pile. But, um, so when I came home, I did a, just a detail. I did like the, my drink and sunglasses and pen that were sitting on my table and just the, it's a city kind of in the background. I really like this, but I don't know if I would have come to this, to painting this, unless I had tried to cram all the other stuff in. But it's just nice to have those little, those little, it's like, I just wanted to do some cloud studies. I just wanted to play. I had no big, I didn't, you know, I almost didn't even want to work in this sketchbook. This is my favorite. It's uh, one my friend Rosie made. It's, um, it's made of Arches paper, but it can be so, it's so precious, you know, a big sheet of Arches paper. It's like, oh, I don't want to mess that up. But if I do a bunch of little boxes and I can do some abstract things or just some studies or just see how the paint behaves and reacts. And, um, I think it's really powerful. Not only is it a great way to get some brush miles in, but it looks cool when you're done where if you just had done like some little studies or practices on a page, it could look really discordant and messy. And when you flip them back through, I've done that, like, you know, practicing brush strokes or playing with a new brush. And I look back at those sketchbook pages and not that your sketchbook is supposed to look like some finished piece of art, but, um, but I kind of treat my sketchbooks as a, as a piece of art because I don't paint large wall paintings these days. I kind of like working in the, in the sketchbooks. I like that kind of like in, in a capsule of art um, done over the course of a couple months. Um, your sketchbook can be whatever you want it to be. It can be a finished work of art on high quality materials. It can be a Dollar Tree sketchbook that you just, you know, do practices and then nobody sees. Your sketchbook should be whatever you want it to be and whatever is useful and inspiring to you. Um, but, you know, I've had like a lot of those sketchbooks where like the, I've just been kind of like testing out the paper and then like I do some really nice work in there and I'm flipping through and like there's those embarrassing pages and it's like, well, I could jessam over them and then draw something on top. It's like, I don't want to do that. That's, that page is done. I don't feel like going backwards. I only like to go forward. It's like when I'm knitting, I'm like forward only. There has to be like a, a structural problem that's going to like ruin the whole piece for me to go back and like rip back a a like a yarn thing because it's like nope forward only forward only mistakes can sk stay in forward only um, and I kind of feel like that with the sketchbooks too so if you can still get that practice in which is so good for us and have it look a little bit more orderly along the way I think that's kind of nice too because also you can go back on those grids if you have a grid of different things and you can doodle in those grids on top um, you can practice pens like you got some new pens you want to test off you can go over those brush stroke practices or those like you know, just different technique practice boxes and you can go and doodle on them. And it's just this, this kind of like evolving work of art. And I think that's kind of exciting. Um, and maybe you think I'm being a little fussy and that's okay. You do your sketchbook however you want to do it. But uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. And I found that exciting. And I'm really excited to play with that with some card making ideas because I feel like my card making, uh, it's been kind of stale, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I feel, sometimes I don't feel like doing all those crazy techniques. I just want to make a card and, but then it's like, well, if I just make this card, it's not really, it's fine just to make a card for fun. I have a whole armoire full of cards that I need to send out really. So making cards, it seems like if I want to make a card, I should be doing something that's new and exciting and different and something I can share. So I don't know. I don't know. It was funny because I was thinking about hobbies and I had seen this. I don't think we talked about this last week. I had seen this channel because I had it on my list and I didn't, didn't cross it off and we kind of went off the rails last week in our little conversation. <laughs> I blame the head injury. Um, totally fine, by the way. Um, and I'd seen this 
this channel, and I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to like throw anybody under the bus because everybody should like what they want to like, but this, it, it auto-played. I was watching, what was I watching? I think I was watching a review of a product. No, what I was watching was it was somebody doing a, it was a video essay, it was a critical video essay about uh, the website Timu, and then what played after this critical essay on Timu was a Timu haul and it just started up and and it was um and I, I noticed the person's the person's username was so and so so I'm not gonna say her name because I don't want anybody to you know give her a hard time uh unboxing addiction and so I clicked on the channel name just to see what the person was all about and and the first line was my favorite my main hobby is shopping and I was like shopping is not a hobby you know, because I'm like, I hate to shop, so I mean, I can't imagine somebody doing that for fun. So I'm just like, hobby, hot shopping is a shopping's not a hobby. And so I was mentioning that to my husband, I'm like, Jason, do you think shopping's a hobby? He goes, well, it, it can be, you know. I said, no, hobby is something, you got to make something, it's, you've got to be producing something, creating something for it to be a hobby. He's like, no, I think a hobby is just something you do for fun. And I was like, what? And so I looked up the definition of hobby, and it was, um, it was to pursue something that you do not wish to gain money from. And I'm like, oh, well then shopping's the ultimate hobby because not only do you not gain money from it, you probably, you spend money. So I just thought that was really funny. And then I started thinking, cause I'm always like, I have so many hobbies. I have no hobbies now that I think about it because like, I feel like everything that I create is, is eventually going to make its way onto YouTube into a tutorial or something like that and into my business. So yeah, maybe I have zero hobbies. That, that might be it. Like I almost, I consider podcasting a hobby because I'm not, I, I don't do it to make money. I do it for fun. I do it because I enjoy it. By the way, I'm interviewing Harry from the Art Gear Guide after we're done filming Sat Chat here. He's going to be on this weekend on the podcast. And I apologize for my, my mic was a little hot on the Steve Mitchell interview last weekend. Nobody mentioned it, surprisingly. I overdubbed some parts of it because it was like the, the beginner, you know, look at, when I start a video, I'm like really loud and my levels didn't look very high in my, uh, my recording studio. So I turned them up and it was too much. It was too distorted. I had to re overdub my, the beginning of my, um, my podcast and so I'm like trying to like <laughs> dub it like I'm dubbing a movie or something because they uh I had that closed captioning and uh, so I was trying to dub it like that and I was just like oh <laughs> oh my word do you remember like the old kung fu movies that they would play on the weekends that's that's what the beginning of last week's podcast looked like if you watch the version instead of listening to it but um little things like that like because I, I, I will listen back to it. I usually don't watch them but I'll listen back to them um, in my podcast app and uh, oh yeah I pick apart every single thing every time I like talk over somebody or uh, which I'm trying not to but it's so hard it's so hard to like because you're excited you're like oh they say something like oh I want to know more about that you know and you try to you try to like I need to keep a notepad and just write down so that like so I don't have to interrupt them they can keep on going that's like well let's circle back what was that thing that you said that was really cool um, but anyway that that my mic was a little hot for that and I was annoyed and um, I did have someone say that it seemed like the video like skipped ahead. And so I'm not sure if that's something that was done in my the, the software that I use the, or the application that I use, or if like maybe with the uploading because it's it records like onto the cloud while you're doing it and records I, I, it's a uh, technology right so it records on your computer while it's recording to the cloud so I guess so if there is bad internet it will like uh, back things up and then spit it back up into the cloud and should make it pretty seamless so I'm not sure maybe I'm pushing a button I shouldn't be pushing I don't know you know I'm learning it's a hobby but is it really a hobby because I'm putting it on my YouTube channel and putting it out there into the world maybe I'll be a professional podcaster someday who knows who knows I've studied broadcasting that's where my that's what my college degree is in so I don't know yeah I don't think I have any hobbies I am <laughs> I am the typical American <laughs> I'm a typical American hustler who, you know, can't just do something for fun except make sourdough bread. That's why there's no sourdough bread videos. I have to keep it a hobby. So I guess I do have some hobbies and I like to, and I've been crocheting and I'm certainly not going to be making any money from that. I would be a very, I would be a starving crochet artist if that was the case. And I've kind of lost the, uh, I've kind of lost my, my passion for the current project I'm working on, which is a bunch of crochet hearts, which I intended to 
sew together into this avant-garde heart scarf. And whenever I tell anybody about my avant-garde heart scarf, they think I'm talking about Eric Skarsgård from True Blood. And uh, I'm like, that would be a really cool name, avant-garde heart scarf. Wouldn't it? Does it sound kind of posh? I'm telling you, next pet, avant-garde heart scarf. Meet my cat, avant-garde heart scarf. <laughs> it sounds fancy. <laughs> that would be a character in my novel. Avant-garde heart scarf. Came to the party wearing a fetching red dress. But was she the murderer? Who knows? <laughs> I'm not a novelist. I can't even type. Oh my gosh. So uh, speaking of uh, speaking of my dog and not being able to type, tied those segue those really good. I have a video coming up next week, and it is a review of a ergonomic chair. And you're probably thinking, Lindsay, why are you re reviewing an ergonomic chair? And the reason is because. Um, I know a lot of people can't sit to craft for a long period of time, um, so that's why I reviewed the the uh, sit stand desk because I think that would be very comfortable if you can get up and move around. In fact, I woke up this morning, I was so stiff. I woke up at like four, and um, I was like, "Oh my word!" I feel like just like what did I fall? I fall a lot. I'm very clumsy. <laughs> I'm like, did I, did I fall and hurt myself and forget about it or something? I'm so stiff, like my back is sore, my hips, my legs, like what is going on? And I think what happened was I've been very tired this week and I've been going to sleep. And this usually happens when we start to get towards a change of the seasons. Um, I've been like going to bed. I've been ready for bed at like nine. I've been like making my stay up, myself stay up till like 9.30 before I go to bed because I'm worried I go to bed too early that I'll wake up in the middle of the night and won't be able to fall back asleep. So I've been making myself stay up till 9.30 and I've been sleeping hard. Um, and so, but I, I went to bed at 10, I woke up at four and I think I must not have moved the entire night and I was so stiff. So finally, I got, I, I did manage to fall back asleep. I got up around five, around six, and um, got like a, I make those rice bags. I have a video on it on my channel. I take um, like cloth, cotton, quilter's cotton usually, and I'll sew like a, it's like a pillowcase with a channel down the middle. I fill it with rice and I sew it shut. Usually make a little cover for it. Um, and nuke that for three minutes and I put that on my back and that did the trick but it, actually when I got moved around I felt a lot better I feel I'm fine now 100% but I like walking the dog and stuff but I feel I think it's because I like must have just been sleeping so hard this week and not moving much in my sleep I was so stiff so anyway we all have these aches and pains and um, I usually sit with pretty good posture I think like right now I'm sitting on a on the old my old office chair I don't I don't I rarely sit back in my chair. Um, I actually have a little padded makeup stool that I was using. That, that's quite nice because it does get it it's small and I can wheel it around. It doesn't take up much space. Um, I had one just like this with a big old paint smear on the back that you probably remember because everyone would talk about it like, let's get a new chair. <laughs> and that one's in the room of hoard because apparently I'm a hoarder. I can't get rid of chairs. Um, I just moved this one over here because I could stick, I could stick my the little makeup stool underneath the vanity which it actually came with originally because it was my daughter's because I am a hoarder I can't get rid of anything and uh that's where my sewing machine lives so I, I'll sit over there to sew which is generally just small little projects like mending things because I don't have the attention span to sew a garment these days uh but where were we oh so I'm doing this video about this chair and I find that on that chair because the chair has lumbar support kind of like your car does and I find that when I'm sitting on that chair um like the back is right the lumbar part is right on my lower back. It's rather nice. And um, I'll, I'll, a lot of times I'll, I don't lock the back in position and then I'll, I'll like kick way back and I'll like, you know, review something I've been editing and it's just, it's very, it's very comfortable. I don't sit still very long during the day, so I don't know. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like my result, you know, definitely check out other reviews of the chair. That's coming up. But anyway, my dog kept coming into the office where I was recording that review. And so I got her on camera a few times for you because uh, people were like, I want to see Penny. Last week after like, you know, talking about my head injury, everyone wants to see my adorable dog. My adorable dog that's going to be the death of me. Um, you know, she's usually pretty good. I think the issue was that uh, I was not ready for her to be bolting because we were just standing watching the deer and I didn't have her, I had her hooked on the back of her harness, not on the front of her harness. And I usually walk her hooked on the front of the harness, but then she gets so, she's acting so good that I don't even think about it, I hook her on the back. Um, 
but when you walk in the when you hook to the front of their harness if they pull from you they get twirled around to you so it teaches them not to pull so i have started hooking her on the front making sure i hook her on the front especially if we're going in the woods which yeah i took her back in the woods because man it's boring to walk on the road and we have no sidewalks here in maine it's just like snowbank and middle of the road where you're going to get killed so it is woods is a great option um so everything's going well got to hook her on the right part the right part of the harness but Anyway, that video is coming up next week. I think I have it scheduled for Thursday. Um, and yeah, you'll see, you'll see my simulated typing. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, I, was, I mostly use it as an office chair, but I will, I can use it at my craft desk up there, but um, maybe something people are interested in. It's expensive though. So it's hard to recommend. It's like, well, you know, if you need it, I'm sure it's worth it. But if you don't need it, then it's an expensive chair. I think it's kind of like it's an ergo chair but I think it reminds me a lot of those chairs I see gamers using you know um but I don't play video games so I don't know um something else I've been why well, gosh I have a lot of projects that a lot of videos I've been working on but they're kind of in the future because I've already scheduled them out and my reviews I'm out a few weeks on reviews so I've got reviews till almost the end of March already uh, recorded and, and uh scheduled out but I did finish my review on the Da Vinci gouache um, I'm actually going to use, I, and that's scheduled quite far out, it's like March 25th or something. Um, I'm going to use it a little bit more because I'm just, something is just in the back of my head thinking maybe I'm missing something about the squash and I, I don't know. Um, the more I'm using it, the less I'm liking it, but I also feel like there might be something that I'm missing. Uh, but anyway, that, that review will come out. You can let me know what you think about that gouache in the, in the comments if you've used it. Um, I'll look at my list. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I have, uh, I have gone off the rails again. Oh my gosh, this weekend we had a fun adventure. We, I wanted to see a frozen waterfall. And so I Googled waterfalls near me and we found this waterfall in Monroe, Maine. And it was so pretty. It was a little treacherous. And I thought our car was going to slide down the embankment because like it was starting to skid on the ice. But anyway, I uh, went down to the waterfall. So gorgeous. Not totally frozen though. It was, um, it was only partially frozen. And I think it's probably because I'm a very fair weather outdoorsy person. And if we're in like single digits, I don't want to be outside. So I put the long underwear on and everything. It was like in the twenties and we went out there. It was quite pleasant and lovely. Um, a waterfall was beautiful, but it wasn't totally frozen, but it was partially frozen. I took some photos, which are very underwhelming, but I'm thinking I have enough information in my brain and from the photos that I can do a painting. I just love this green color the ice has next to the water and the water looks like black. Uh, it's just crazy. It's beautiful. Um, so that's something that I want to work on. And then when we were driving, leaving the waterfall, we were heading out to Belfast to grab lunch at a pub and uh, we drove by this like decrepit old train station that was so adorable that um, definitely I'm going to go back this summer and paint because I'm a very fair weather plein air painter. Oh, and I have a, I have a new plein air setup I want to try and I can add it to my list of plein air setup. I have this folder. It's all plein, up, plein air setup videos that, I, that I'm going to someday edit, someday. <laughs> That'll be a doozy of a video. Um, but yeah, I get another stuff that I want to try out this summer. So I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, we're just about out of time. Thank you so much for being part of the Frugal Crafter community and hanging out for this sat chat. Let me know what you're up to in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.